please click the subscribe button and the notification icon. It will help us a lot. Hi, this is Rodrigo from Frame Freak Studio, and this is the Creative Hustler Show. Today's guest is Walter Tolp. He is an illustrator and a character designer from the Netherlands who has been working with a lot of uh, magazines locally. Well, he started working there. Now he's a teacher in Escalism, and pretty much he's one of them amazing artists who is being recognized internationally. So welcome, Walter. Well, thank you very much. Welcome. So, uh, can you tell us a little bit about your history? How did you get started into art? How, uh, what made you choose this path? Uh, pretty much all that. Okay. Um, well, I, I'm uh, from the Netherlands, as you mentioned, uh, and I come from a family where um, we were always really creative. So my dad is an artist. Um, we all play music. I have two brothers and a sister, and we, we all play music. and. Uh, my dad took me on painting trips from an early age where we would go paint outdoors. And for as long as I can remember, I have been fascinated by drawing and, and painting. Um, so for me, there was not really a moment where I decided, you know, this is what I want to do. It, it, it was clear from the moment I could think, you know. Uh, so when I could hold a pencil, I just was fascinated by by drawing and, and what you can do with it, um, then I never uh, thought of it as a career until, uh, you know, when you're in high school, you have to think about what, what will you become when you grow up. And I, I was really naive at the time. So someone mentioned, you know, maybe illustration would be interesting for you. And I had no idea what illustration was. Uh, but you know, they said, you know, go to art academy that you can study illustration there and you can draw. So I thought, wow, you can draw. That's that's what I want. So I I uh, just went to that school and uh, studied illustration there. And f from there on, um, I, I started my career as an illustrator, really starting out, taking on every possible job that, you know, everyone who would hire me, I would just do it because I just wanted to make a living uh, doing art. Nice. Um, since you pretty much have been raised into the art world and always been there, uh, I imagine that you have met some uh, friends, people during your life who come from a family where artists maybe not that well supported or something like that. Uh, do you felt it had a difference uh, in what you were able to achieve uh, to have been raised in a family that supports art uh, in comparison to them? Or do you think it's just like a kind of different paths? Um, I think, uh, well, both have their benefits and, and their, uh, what do you call it, the downside. Um, you know, if if you are supported in, like I have been, um, you have to uh, fall back on yourself when it comes to being disciplined and, and knowing what you want. Uh, because uh, the, my parents always told me, you know, if, if you want to be an artist, just go for it, give it a try. And if you fail, you know, you, you have to find a way to figure out what to do then. Uh, I think if you've come from a situation where uh, you're not being supported, um, you really need some extra strength to, to fight for what you want to do. And uh, I don't know, maybe uh, some people, they they become even stronger because of that. Uh, others, they they decide to to not pursue that their passion anymore. Um, I think it it is always important to to know what you're passionate about and to to follow follow that for me at least that's what i think is important because that way you will end up in the place where you will be at your best is, is does that answer your question yeah definitely uh i have seen some friends as well who didn't have that support and that kind of uh gave them an extra flame inside it was like mm. i'm i'm going to have succeed in yes. this thing and i'm going to show them so uh, yeah yeah they really want to prove yeah, definitely that. <laughs> and 
how is the Netherlands when it comes to art? Because for me, it was uh, I, I was living in, in Europe for a, a couple of months. Uh, I was jumping from country to country. Oh, cool. And it was such a different experience because, well, I, I was in Bulgaria for like three months and and the first thing that I noticed is that my house was completely surrounded by uh, small art studios and people painting in the streets. And, and then I went <laughs> to this place uh, called Vitesha Boulevard, which is like kind of uh, a commercial place that has everything from ice cream to selling cars, uh, luxury cars and things like that. And there were always artists, musicians, uh, people p doing paintings, uh, graffiti. And that was such like a, a refreshing change of scenery for me. Uh, in, in that case, uh, how do you see what uh, Netherlands uh, uh, does this country support a lot of art or uh, because at least in Sweden, in Stockholm, I, uh, I know that there is support for art, but I didn't saw it as much as like okay. in the street. Uh, yeah, I think that um, no, there there are different uh, types of art. So you have the the uh, painters, uh, you have uh, graffiti artists, you have comic book artists. I think uh, comic books are more popular in the southern part of Europe, in France and, and uh, Italy, Spain. Um, but when it comes to illustration and uh, and fine art, uh, I think there's a lot of it here in Holland. Um, and I have never had a problem finding, finding work in art. So um, I think, uh, you know, it's really, really possible to to have a career in art in the Netherlands if you want to. Nice. That, that is re really good to hear. Uh, I'm going to ask you kind of a tricky question. Uh, okay. When you started, uh, well, pretty much when you started getting mostly into the professional uh, side of being an artist, what was something that you didn't expect at all? Like, uh, kind of the the thing you didn't knew you didn't knew <laughs> that okay. became like a realization and and that is really important in your career um let me think the thing i didn't know and it became really important um let's see let me think about that for a while. Let's get back to that question later on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, I know that is a, a little bit tricky. Uh, on the other side, what was something that was like, uh, kind of like a, like a cliche, that, that is something that you always suspected that it was going to be really important and became important as well? Yes, well, I think that is, um, uh, as artists, uh, most of us like to draw and just to focus on drawing and to have a career in it, you have to uh, at the same time be able to promote your art and also be able to uh, to price your art to you know to make it make a living out of it. you have to be a businessman as well. And it was something that I knew I I wasn't really good at because you know like most artists I, I like to focus on drawing, not on, uh, you know, being an accountant or, or something. So uh, my way of dealing with that was always to to hire people to do that for me. So it, you know, it does cost me some money, but I know that uh, for that money I buy uh, time to to be able to paint and to draw, and someone else takes care of that. So I had an agent, uh, you know, uh, going around the country with my uh, portfolio at the time. Uh, nowadays, you don't need to travel with your art anymore. You can just send it by email. Uh, but those kinds of things, I always uh, had representation and stuff like that. Uh, and that was something that I, I expected, you know, to be a, a big thing to, you know, to make a living out of it. You have to think about how do you uh, um, set up your business besides just having fun drawing. Yeah, that is something that I noticed. Like uh, most people that I interview, especially if they have uh, gone far in, in the, prof uh, the professional career, even if it looks like they are all about art and loving that, 
I have realized that even if they don't show it, they know like a, at least a very solid and, and basic skills about business and the strategy and, and work ethic and things like that. And this is something that I taught, especially to my friends uh, in my country, because it's like, they just want to focus on artists. Like, look, if you, re that, that is good if this is a hobby, but if you want to make this a, a profession, like you have to have, uh, a, a, a very solid base in business. It doesn't yes. mean that you have to go like really uh, deep in, into that or really strategic uh, because that takes a lot of time as yeah. well. And, yeah. and being an artist is a lot of time as well. So, uh, but at least like the very, pr the, the most basic principles that are like solid and that pretty much uh, perennial that they never, uh, it, they will be through for years and years and years and years. At least that uh, they need to have, I think. Yeah, and and it's it's a, a tricky thing because as artists, as a you know, when you start drawing as a child, you want to show your drawing. Look, this is what I made, and um, you know, we still have that child inside us. We want to we want to get praised for our art, or we want to uh, show how 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 well we did, and that's why it there's a uh, balance you need to find between that feeling and you know doing business because when you ask a certain amount of money then you as an artist you easily start feeling arrogant you know i uh, i i have to charge money for and and then also clients are are likely to say well you you love doing this right so uh, uh why charge that much you know because you love what you do and i always thought of it the other way around so you know, if I don't like what I, if I wouldn't like it, would you pay me more? Because in that case, I'll just say I don't like what I'm doing and then I can charge double, right? So, and they, you know, so if you uh, detach yourself from your own art, it becomes easier to sell it. If, if, uh, if I would have to sell someone else's art, it's much easier for me to say, well, this is the most amazing artist, you should hire him. But to say that of yourself, is is tricky because you you feel arrogant and someone else doesn't have that personal attachment to your art it's only you who has that so if you can uh, be aware of that it becomes easier to to be a businessman as well yeah and it, in those cases i think uh there there is a need for certain uh aggressiveness because no matter how well you do like there is going to be like a a, a really let's call it a special client <laughs> mm -hmm. that 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 is going to be a little bit of a pain in the ass and, <laughs> and as you say they are going to mention this kind of things and in those cases you have to be like very firm and not, not in the way of being an, an asshole or anything like that but like no like this is how it's going to happen and if and if you don't want to do this, then uh, look for somebody else. Yes. And, and that requires certain strength of character. Exactly, and especially as a freelancer, because the the fear of every freelancer is that you lose the job, that no one's going to hire you. So especially when you're starting out, you are likely to take on every job. And uh, then, you know, I think in negotiations, you should be willing to lose the job because if you are allow yourself to to lose the job, then you can really negotiate. And if you, in your in the back of your mind, you think, well, I'm going to do this anyway. They they can always sense it, and they will just lower their price or or come with other uh, things you need to uh, comply to. So uh, it's it's good to uh, to have the confidence and to think, well, I might lose the job, but this is what I stand for. This is the way I want to do my business and from there on you can let it grow because after a while you will attract clients that take you seriously as an artist yeah definitely and, and, and this is hard because if you don't if you cannot take seriously yourself uh it, it is going to be very hard for the other, other people to take you seriously as well exactly and and on this topic uh if you met uh a young, talented, driven artist who is about to enter, let's call it the real world. Uh, what advice would you give that person? 
if, let's say if he wants to follow a similar path as you did, and what advice should that person ignore? Um, well, first of all, uh, well, I can only speak from from what works for me. So you know, things might not work for somebody else. Um, what what has worked for me in the past and still does is that uh, I always start with what I'm passionate about. That's how I make my decisions. So I don't try to fit into a mold of what I think is expected of me. I try to start with what I'm passionate about and that's what I communicate, that's what I put in my portfolio um, because that's the thing that's most honest and that I'm uh, at my best at because um, that's where my heart is, you know? and um, so, and also in uh, taking on work, yes or no, I sometimes I, even when I needed the money, I have said no to certain jobs because it just wasn't, uh, you know, it did, didn't uh, match with me. It, it was something that uh, was so far from what I wanted to do um, that I still said no. So for me, being true to myself has has really helped to uh, to uh, direct me to the place where I really want to be to attract clients that ask me for for me and it may sound a little contradictory because um, no people some people know me for doing so many different things and when I say this you might think you know this is uh, me doing just one thing the one thing I like but the one thing I like happens to be doing all kinds of things. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And, and this is something very, I think that is a special skill. I do know people who are like very good at many areas. And on the other hand, I, I know people who are like really good at just one thing. And if they try to do something else, like kind of they, they fall off. So, so I think that is depends on, on the person itself. Like, what kind of skills do they have? Like, can yeah. they actually manage things? I have interviewed people who who, who leave me uh, speechless because like, okay, yeah, I can do animation, I can do illustration, character design, visual developer, and they do it all like really good. And it's like, and I feel like, okay, like I'm not doing anything with my life. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There is this guy, Christoph Batcher, uh, this guy pretty much is like an art director and he's a painter and he's an illustrator and he's pretty much exhibiting, uh, doing paintings for art exhibits while he's traveling and he's also uh, practicing <laughs> martial arts and, wow. and, and, and competing <laughs> and, and, and traveling the world. It's like, how can you do all yeah, that yeah, like, yeah. And, and doing yeah. it well? Like, yeah. and, and, but at the same time, it, like you okay, yeah, I'm not that guy, so uh, I'm just going to focus on, on the yeah, few things yeah. that I can do really well, right? Well, that's that's the thing. I think he would probably also do the things that he's passionate about, and um, that, those are the things you are most likely to, to excel at. So um, from an outsider, it may look like he's doing everything, but he will know his own limitations. He will know all the things that he, he will not be really good at, or he will probably even see uh, the things he's doing. You know, you're always at at the top of your game, so you're always looking for the next challenge, and you always see uh, the things that you still are not able to do. So um, I think skill is just uh, the sum of all the little things you learned over time. So when you see, uh, let's say, uh, a, a professional uh, basketball player you know michael jordan you see him do all those tricks and uh, you know it seems like he, he he knows everything but all everything he does he has learned there's nothing there that that he you know it has to uh, have come from somewhere so he uh, and uh, by uh, putting so much time and, uh, and effort into it and training you know when everyone goes home he's he will still be at the at the court you know practicing his layups and, and stuff that's how you get to a, to a, a high level and um, I think you know doing many different things um, 
can also look like that from the outside because people tell me often that I do so many different things. And for me, I, um, I look at another level to it and I think, well, you might think that it's different when you, you see a caricature or you see a character design, but uh, in fact, it has the same principles, you know, it's, it's about uh, composition, it's about color, it's about light, it's about values, all those things are the same. And it's just a matter of how do I, uh, you know, fine tune these, all these elements and, you know, do I want more exaggeration or less exaggeration? Do I want more contrast or less contrast? You know, if I, if I push it this way, it becomes cartoony. If I push it this way, it becomes realism. Uh, but it's the same thing for me. So it, for, to me, it doesn't really feel like I'm uh, I'm doing all these different things. I'm just trying to uh, um, expand the possibilities of the, the principles that I'm learning. Yeah, definitely. And how did you go about like uh, the discipline of pretty much putting in the work every day, every day, every day, every day? Because... Uh, this is few people, but I have seen them where they think like, oh, they just are, uh, this artist is just magically talented and he can do all these things. It's like, no, 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 no. Like, uh, this person has sit their asses uh, on their asses for hours every day. And, and, and that's why, why he can do that or she can do that. And, and at this point I have reached, uh, this level where, uh, somebody tells me like, oh, I've been working on like, I don't know, uh, eight years on this. And I, sh and I look at the artist like, this is not the work of eight years. And then I compare it to others. It's like, okay, this person has put in the hours and, mm -hmm. and, and it's really obvious. And just recently was able to, to see that. And again, it's been, it's because I have been seeing, I lately I have been surrounded of all these people who are actually putting the work and the different can show. So uh, how do you go about it into the creating the discipline of doing things every day and, and pretty much advancing your art? Um, well, first of all, the having the discipline uh, is has never been a problem for me. It's not like I have to force myself to get to work. Uh, it's more like I can't wait to get up tomorrow because I can draw again. And that has been like that for my entire life. So, um, you know, I, I, uh, I ha I'd have to stop myself rather than to push myself to, to start drawing. So that's one thing I, uh, you know, for some reason I always want to draw. So that helps. Uh, and, and, you know, the best way to learn to draw is just to, to keep on drawing. Now, there is a thing, you know, when you mention, uh, you know, putting in eight years of work and you don't really see uh, the effect of it, that has to do, I think, with studying effectively. So um, you can draw just for fun. And if you are ob oblivious to your, your mistakes or the things where you uh, don't understand what you're doing, uh, then you probably won't improve. You're just repeating the same thing over and over again. So I think uh, in order to improve as an artist, you have to be brutally honest with yourself and uh, and see where you're making mistakes or, or mistakes, let's say, where you uh, don't understand yet w how things work. And uh, one thing is is to have people around you that can, and uh, uh, you know, in the best case, those are artists that know what, or, or teachers that know what they're talking about. And when they look at your art, they can help you uh, to point out the things that you need to work on. And they, and, and so uh, I always have a rule. And that is, if I see something that doesn't work in my drawing, I have to fix it. So I never want to leave something in my drawing where I know that it, it doesn't work. So, uh, and I, I'd rather do a drawing over again and make it work than, than to leave it and, and, and keep the mistake in there. So, uh, I think that helps. And then, uh, you know, find out ways to learn. So for example, 
uh, if you go to live drawing, try to understand why you are doing live drawing. Are you trying to, for example, you, you can just go there and start drawing and you will learn things from it. But if you understand why you are drawing from a model, for example, if you do a three hour pose and you are rendering, what you will learn is rendering. You won't learn doing gestures or you won't learn anatomy necessarily. You will learn probably uh, rendering light and shadow really well. If you go to live drawing sessions where there are really short poses and you have just one minute to, to capture the pose in a few lines, then you know you have to be aware that that's what you're uh, learning. You are learning to look and really fast uh, capture a pose in a few lines. And um, so really try to look for those things that you feel you need to learn as an artist, because that's the fastest way to grow. And if you are, uh, if you want to learn gesture and you go to a session where you're just focusing on rendering, you're just learning another skill that you may not need. Yeah, definitely. And you mentioned something uh, important. As well. well, two things important as well uh, that I see that the best artists are the, or in general, the, the best people at, uh, at what they do is they keep learning. Uh, and I, I met some talented people who just like, oh yeah, I just arrived and, uh, and stop learning there. And I know people who are like at levels that uh, most cannot even imagine and they keep learning. I, I, I know I have friends who have become uh, multimillionaires in their business and things like that. And they keep buying courses, they keep reading books, they keep going to events, uh, workshops, uh, things where they can learn more and more and more. Uh, and, into pretty much fixing the parts where they consider themselves weak. <coughs> Sorry. And also uh, what you mentioned as well as being surrounded by the right people, that is really key. And um, I will talk it out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so there was this point when I was in Europe and I, I, I saw a couple of videos from my friends there and there was this moment where they were just going insane every day. Like they will wake up at seven, uh, go to the gym, uh, go to have breakfast, uh, work in their business, then go uh, with friends to in, in the afternoon to kind of hang around. They, they will go to, uh, to parties all, all night. They will uh, finish the party at 3 a.m. or something like that. And then they would wake up again at seven and do all over again. Wow. And I, when I saw that, I thought, no, like uh, these guys are like really fit and, and maybe they have a lot of energy and all that. And I will never be able to do that. Um, there was this event where all, uh, we all got together and there was a moment uh, and it was a very short time, but it just went a couple of days. And then there was something like that made a click in my head and, I kind of uh, sync to their way of behaving. And I was doing exactly that. And I would wake up at seven, like really excited, like, oh, these guys must be like in, in, in the breakfast right now and, and going down the hotel. And I, I didn't feel tired. And, and mm. when I it hit me, like, damn, like I'm, I'm living this way and I would thought <laughs> that it will destroy me. Now, uh, after I, I came home uh, one week later, like I woke up one day, like completely sick. And, <laughs> <laughs> and that was like, uh, maybe my body catching up to that. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but in the moment, like I, it didn't feel like that. Uh, mm. And, and that, that is something like that was so powerful that I, they thought like, this is a, a really powerful lesson. And, and I don't think I will be able be able to explain it in words to, 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 to people who haven't experienced that. Like the, the huge difference that makes to be surrounded by people mm. who are in the path of doing something that you want to do as well. Like. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Uh, I, it sounds like you had some kind of adrenaline rush going on there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, and uh, well, I, I think two things, you know, uh, one of it is it, absolutely true when you're surrounded by people that are better than you or, or at least, you know, also really motivated, then, uh, you know, it, it ignites a fire in you and you, it, you can just catch on and, and, and get in, this, in, in the same groove. Uh, so uh, that's 
what I think is a good thing about art schools, you know, old fashioned art schools where you're in a classroom with, with other people because they are all willing to learn and, and being surrounded by people or, or working at a studio. I personally don't work at a studio, uh, but I can imagine working at a studio has that same effect. Um, I, I experienced that now working even from home with people I have admired for years and now suddenly I'm working with these people on the same projects and that, you know, I feel, I feel super small working alongside those big names, you know, and then when I see their work, every time I, I try to learn from it, I try to understand what is it that they're doing, you know, because often they are working on the same character or, or uh, on the same problem, and they have different ways to solve it. And I'll just examine their approaches. And that is something that is super inspiring and that I learned so much from. At the same time, what you mentioned, um, I think there is a danger in there uh, you know, because especially uh, when you go online, you see all these people studying and learning, and it's also important to keep a, a healthy balance to, to uh, you know, what, what you mentioned when you came home, your body catch, caught up to, to what you've been doing. Uh, you know, you, I've experienced uh, one time where I really went too far and uh, it really affected my health. And after that, I, I try to keep a, a more healthy balance because, you know, the inspiration needs to come from somewhere. You need to have live a life and, and experience things to, to draw from, to get your ideas from. So uh, personally, I, I try to even I love working hard and I, I work hard all the time. But at the same time, I take breaks or I go on a holiday and uh, and there's also. You know, drawing for fun can also be something that if for an outsider, it may look like I'm doing the same thing. You know, I was working and now I'm drawing for fun uh, outside drawing people or, or something. But for me, that is relaxing. You know, I'm, 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 it, it looks like doing the same thing, but it's completely different because there is no rules. I can't just uh, relax doing it. Yeah, that is a way different experience. Uh, uh, and there was this guy, Thomas Fluhart, he mentioned something as well. That oh, he's he awesome. Yes. <laughs> he, yes, he really is. He's a great has, guy. He has a lot of energy. <laughs> and, <laughs> and he mentioned that, that he takes uh, breaks where he pretty much draws just for fun. And the idea from that is that he's not going to post those drawings anywhere. Like, he just wants yes. to be completely free out of judgment, like just let his head be free. And uh, and yeah, like uh, I, I think that was a really important practice as well, like uh, yeah. just and doing it because you want to enjoy it a little bit. That's yeah, how. I do exactly the same thing. You know, it, it it's really a different thing in this age where you, uh, where everything is posted and, and shared online and you get likes and pe people uh, appreciate, you know, they show their appreciation by by liking it. But it, you know, it can be a tricky thing where you, where it turns around and you start creating art to post. And I don't want to fall into that trap. So I you know I have sketchbooks or I do, do sketches just for me where I decide not to post them because if I know I'm not going to post them, then the only reason to do it is is for my own pleasure, and it it really uh, uh, allows me to be much more free from time to time. Yeah, definitely. And well, you mentioned before that you had this experience of doing things before the internet and and, and pretty much sending your work through through mailers and things like that. Uh, this is a topic that I. Uh, in the last years, I have been exploring more and more because I have seen people who maybe they're just not aware of just the miracle that we have with technology. And for example, uh, to give you a little bit of context, the first time I went to CTN uh, about uh, two years ago, or three years ago, something like uh, we saw this guy who just uh, went through a portfolio review and, and, and this is a grown ass man and and he just goes crying and screaming because he had a bad portfolio review. Uh, it's still young, but man, like he was 
he he was above eighteen, and 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 his father was there, like trying to console him or something like that, and he was like just doing, uh, uh, pretty much uh, screaming and all that that stuff that he was going to leave art and and, and for me that was like really crazy <laughs> because it's like. Man, like you're really young still, and mm. there's still there's still time, and, <laughs> and you're like being completely destroyed by a negative review. Like mm. that that uh, that's a kind of weakness. Like there, there, for lack of a better word, like I I, I sense it like a, a a deep weakness emotionally and mentally. And again, because I come from a third world country, we pretty much solve. Uh, and live <laughs> through not having all this advantage, Techno technologically mm. speaking, and still we don't have many of these things. Like uh, the the reason I was able to do a lot was because I was able to register my business in the U.S. But for example, in, 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 there are still many countries like mine where if you get money by uh, through PayPal or something like that, there there is no way where you can take the cash and use it in your country like mm. uh, a, a, a local way, let's call it, or a national way where you can do that. You have to look for other tools uh, that are n maybe not always the best for you to reach. Oh, so really? can, can you, is, is it, well, is it yours to spend online? To uh, yeah, like uh, let's say if you get money in PayPal, you can spend it online uh, buying in sites like eBay or something like that. Yeah, or, okay. Yes, a PayPal. We but if I let's say if I had it in PayPal and I want to uh, pay the electricity bill or okay. pay the gasoline here, like oh, there's okay. no way to Whoa. get it out and, and, and use it here. And, and there are other methods, but let's say that it, there is this thing called Pioneer, but not everybody can apply to that. And now, uh, now that we have the US business and we have like a US bank, uh, the Silicon Valley Bank account that has solved a lot of problems mm. for us. But yeah. but before that, like for example, if you want to use a Stripe, you cannot do it because it's still not oh, available wow. here. Uh, there yeah. is a lot of payment methods that uh, there is a lot of payment solutions that are not available in countries like mine. Okay, wow. And even well, my experience in Europe, like I thought, like oh man, like I thought we were catching up to technology because we had the cell phones and all that, but it's like a way different experience. Like oh, I just parked my car and I'm going to pay <laughs> for, for this on my phone, <laughs> yeah. or I'm yeah, going to yeah. call a, a Uber. Just came to our country a couple of months ago, and, yeah, and, and yeah, that yeah. was like. The, an easy solution for many of my travels there yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and and all these things and but then i see again like people complaining about how hard it is it's like you you got it easy <laughs> so can you tell us <laughs> oh, a little yeah. bit of, uh, about the difference uh that you see when the internet wasn't like this before and, and you had to go through it manually uh, well when i started that uh was in uh, 2001 so uh, internet existed, but Facebook didn't exist, and Instagram didn't exist, uh, YouTube didn't exist. So uh, the landscape was completely different. Uh, people- uh, Email was paid, if I remember correctly. You had to pay to get an email. <laughs> Um, in the I, I, I don't think so. The, the, it was a phone phone connection, so you had to pay uh, the phone connection for emails, but. Uh, Nowadays, when you send an email, people expect you to reply within at least the same day. And at that time, uh, not everybody had email. And if they did, you know, it, it might just be a week before someone replied. So that wasn't the go-to way of communication. Um, so I, I used to uh, print out my art and create these mailers and I, put them in, in uh, bright red envelopes and I would send those because then they would stand out in the mail. Um, and also I would, uh, I had this physical portfolio where I uh, put all my art in there and then I would call a, a publisher of a magazine or a, a book publisher and then uh, I would have an appointment. So I would uh, go there by train and then I, I, found out that very often uh, uh, an editorial, uh, you know, the, the, 
the editors, editors of a magazine, they had this one floor in a building, but very often another newspaper or another magazine was on another floor. So I pretended to be lost in the building and then I would just walk in to another magazine and, and show them my work to the other art director as well. So I would, uh, you know, and that's the thing when uh, we were talking about marketing or promoting yourself, um, I was never shy. I was always, you know, I, I wanted to make a living. So I always, uh, you know, showed my work to anyone who wanted to see it. And, and uh, I would try to force a way to, to, uh, to find a way to show them. Uh, so th that was uh, how I started out really, you know, and, and the art itself wasn't digital, it was all uh, painted. So the, the, the portfolio was this big folder with, with huge illustrations. Um, so that all changed, uh, and, but it, it took a while at, at the time I think it took about two years before I could make a living off it. Uh, and, uh, and I think um, people starting out, you know, it can be frustrating for people when you uh, apply somewhere, you want to do illustrations. Uh, I, I had that for a magazine and, you know, the illustrations they had weren't that good. I felt I could do much better. Uh, so I went there and I showed them my work and they even, told me that they liked my work better, but they were already working with this other artist and they didn't want to fire him. So uh, they just let me go and uh, I, I wasn't hired. So that can be really frustrating, you know, even w when they say that they like your work more than the, the artist they already have. But I, you know, you can't expect to uh, have a career from one day to the next. You have to, uh, you know, create connections, uh, become friends with people. And one small job will lead to the next and from there on the next and slowly but surely you, your career will grow as long as you put the effort in uh, continuously. The moment you stop doing what you want to do and you give up, that's when it will all stop. Yeah, and this is something important as well. I have met a couple of guys who have pretty much wrecked their careers. Uh, as illustrators and artists because they have this idea that if they just were just like the best artist possible in terms of skill or talent uh, that everybody will have to be forced to hire them or something like that mm. and they weren't that great at integrating to the team or to the people that were mm. hiring him and something that I discover a lot and, and this is something that comes like I ask it uh, every time that I can especially if, if I'm interviewing somebody who has who has had to manage teams and hiring people and they will always tell me like look you can come here with the best talent in the world and if you don't integrate well with our team or if you don't get along that well uh, we will fire you and keep the guy who is not as talented but has the right attitude mm -hmm. and, and that comes over and like if it and, and, and I think it makes sense because you join art because you want to do things you love and you don't want to deal with a person who is making uh, you, your day-to-day -day hard. Uh, you just want to focus on the, the things yeah, you love. Yeah, yeah. And, and now you have to think of, like, no, fuck that. And, and, and then they fire the, that person. And, yeah, and it yeah. always comes over and over again. Like, uh, that is way more important uh, to kind of how... Uh, to kind of integrate to the team and have a nice attitude to it uh, than ha being like this great artist because if, if people love to work with you then that's when things like this happen like okay yeah your your art is better but uh we don't want to risk uh pretty much working with somebody new who we don't know if yeah, you're yeah. going to work as well as this guy integrates with our team yeah, oh, absolutely. I think this is really the key to, to being successful. Um, you know, we all are artists because we love to draw, and but we see things from our own perspective. And the moment you start to think from your client's point of view, and you understand that, you know, he is paying you money for something he wants. So if you can, you know, 
look at it from that perspective and try to add to what he wants. So then you can even give him more than he expects. And the moment you, you are able to do that, then you will surprise him in a positive way and he will definitely hire you again. And, and that can be you know, doing great art, but that can also helping other people on the project, coming up with ideas they haven't thought of. And it doesn't mean you have to do extra hours that you're not paid for, but it's just a mindset where you are not thinking about your own needs, but you're thinking about your client's needs and using your own needs to fulfill those clients' needs. And I think then, you know, you will, you will be successful. And this is also as well where uh, knowing the business skills kind of is important because the goal as a business uh, and the goal as an individual artist are very different. And as you mentioned, it's, it, it's way different to think like, okay, what is something that I want to do that, what does the team need? Mm, yeah, and then absolutely. what does the business need to achieve? Exactly. And, and, yeah, and that's important. Well, especially now I'm working in animation, you know, that is by definition a group effort. So, uh, you know, if you are not able to, to work with other people uh, or you're being an asshole or, you know, why would they hire you even if you do a great art if it's not useful for them because you don't think from their point of view, it they won't hire you. But even when I was working as a, as a freelance illustrator for magazines, for example, then the same thing applied because in that you can look at it as, you know, the art director and you being the team and you're trying to create something together But it, because it's not just him paying you for something you want to do. You're working for a magazine that ma magazine needs to sell. So if you understand that, then you will change your approach. Yeah, definitely. I, I met a guy who was like a really good artist, but every time that uh, the client asked for, ch like he did the illustration, delivered it, and he believed that was like the best thing ever. And then the client came and asked for changes and he would get like incredibly mad. Like he would get really angry every time that they ask changes. And the more changes they ask, like he will get angrier and angrier. And eventually, again, like my country is like very small country. There are not many businesses who who will hire you to be an artist. And he pretty much were now told the options. Mm -hmm. And years after uh, that happened, uh, that he wasn't able to get a job. He was trying to like uh, ask for forgiveness and. And, mm. and try to come back to the previous job since like, no, no, like we don't want to deal with you ever yeah, again. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah. That's the, if you do the opposite, that can happen. Wow. Yeah, definitely. And on this end of pretty much uh, being able to work effectively, uh, I, I think everybody as an artist goes through a way where they get stuck. Uh, they get creative block or something like that. Uh, when you are in that point or you feel overwhelmed or unfocused, what do you do to get back to your center and pretty much reset? Um, well, first of all, I try to uh, move away because then often cases you, you're too much inside your head. So you need to to uh, focus on something else. So, you know, it's really clear if you're stuck in a problem and someone says, come on, let's go to a party and you're, you're hanging out with other people and they tell stories what they're doing. You know, your, your mind is, is in a different place and you're not even thinking about the problem anymore. So it's that realization that it's all in your mind. That's, that's one thing. Um, going for a walk is, is always a good thing. Um, and I realize that very often when I get stuck, it has to do with uh, having expectations of what I'm creating should become. So I'm dealing with the end product instead of the joy of doing it. And uh, f so, for example, uh, I uh, want uh, to have likes for the next post, or I want to uh, create a work of art that would be good enough to hang in a gallery. Or, you know, if I deal with the outcome when I start, 
I, I get stuck because it will never be good enough compared to what I have in my mind. So I need to find a way to get rid of the expectations and just have fun. And what a great thing for me is to go and study because if it's uh, you know studying by definition that the purpose is not to create something special the, the you know when i'm studying i'm trying to learn something i'm trying to to uh, 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 develop my art so uh, that is something that i that i like to do uh, and that that helps a lot and then uh, as i mentioned you no know, Doing something completely different. I uh, I like to uh, play music, so I uh, I play the saxophone. So I just go to a jam session and and play music, and uh, it puts your mind in another place and and uh, gives your head a little rest from from what you're stuck on. Yeah, definitely. That that is something that truly really works as well. Uh, have you ever had like a a moment where you consider something to have been a failure or that ended up setting up for success in the future? Um, wh what do you mean exactly? Uh, have you had a, a failure or a perceived failure, let's say, uh, something that came up wrong completely and you thought that, like, well, that, that, that pretty much that sucks and all that, but that happening uh, ended up uh, putting you into success in, in the oh, future okay. or something like that. Oh, wow. How, how something that went wrong turned out to be something that I learned from, right? Yeah, or that gave you another opportunity that you, did, you weren't even expecting. Okay. <laughs> um, well, I, I have failures all the time. Uh, well, that is if you, if you believe in failures because failures are really uh, something going a little different than you expected. And what I'm uh, recently have been uh, uh, focusing on is uh, not just in art, but in life in general, how so many times during the day, things go a little different than you expected. And uh, you can uh, react to that in two different ways. You can get angry for example, the guy who showed his portfolio and got a negative review, or, or the guy who who got notes to to, uh, you know, to change his art, uh, you can become really angry, or you can just think, well, that's fascinating, and uh, that's something that I've learned over time, especially in character design, because by definition, you will get notes and you will have to change your art, uh, be, and. Uh, uh, why I have no problem accepting that is that I realize that it's not my movie I'm I'm making. I'm not the director. So when I understand that the director is, you know, having a vision and I'm the one helping him to to uh, achieve this this goal, then it's not about me. It's not about my drawing. And for me, I don't I don't care that much because I have already made that drawing that I loved. So now, you know, he just changed the assignment. You know, we wanted a, a, a blue character with a with a purple hat, and then I drew it, and he, and he says, oh, it has to be a green character without a hat. Can you change it? Then I still have that, you know, I did that drawing already that I loved so much. Now let's see, this is a different assignment. Let's see if I can make another character just even even better than that so it's just a new challenge every time i don't see it as i did it wrong and now i have to fix it if to me i try to look at it as a whole new challenge that uh, asks of me you know to to get the the best out of the situation and it and it becomes a really fun challenge that way yeah that is a really nice mindset to have like uh, I, I never consider it that way. That to to have it. Okay, this test is done, and I already did it, and and I'm happy that I did it, and and, and considering this into a new assignment. Uh, but I really like that one. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Now, uh, this is something as well that uh, kind of catches my eye. Uh, there have been many artists that I met that are really amazing. Uh, what they do, but if they try to teach it 
they're they are not the best at it. <laughs> let's call it mm -hmm. that way. Uh, you are a teacher at the school, uh, What makes you? Uh, what do you think makes somebody be able to teach uh, specifically well? Because I, I I've seen all uh, a lot of friends going through school and, and and coming out and it's like oh wow well, like this is the best experience ever. Uh, uh, there there is a couple of guys that I interview that pretty much they went into a sabbatical year uh, and they just uh, spent all the year learning from a school system and Christmas wow. and things like that. And, and when they came out of the year, like the levels of their art had just gone through the roof. And, and after that, everybody was hired them. So uh, what do you think makes the difference between being a, a good uh, teacher uh, versus not being able mm -hmm. to, to teach really well? Okay. Well, well, first of all, I, I, it's really cool to hear that these people, you know, got so much out of their uh, courses at Schoolism. And I can imagine because they really have some amazing teachers there. Um, and, uh, you know, teaching and, and creating art yourself, are they're really two different things. Um, because, and when you are creating art, you are just doing, you know, you, you are responding to what you see and you're, or you're drawing from imagination, but, um at the moment you're doing it we all know this feeling where you lose track of time you forget to eat and then you look up and all you've been doing is drawing and so be, that's a complete completely different state of mind than being aware of what you're doing and to be able to teach is to be able to to see the the steps that you take during that process so Either you have to be able to be aware at the moment you're doing it, or you have to be able to dissect those steps afterwards. And personally, for me, I have always uh, had a really systematical process. So I, uh, it was always easy for me to to see the steps that I took, and it's it's the way my mind works. I want to understand what I'm doing. So and and. The other thing is, uh, I think the most important thing for me doing art is to to want to learn. I, I always want to understand. I'm curious to to learn new things. So that mindset helps me to uh, look at art that way. That that's the reason for me to do it. So uh, every time I learn something, you know, I I rem remember it and. Uh, being a, I, and it took a while for before I uh, I was uh, uh, courageous enough to start teaching. I was really afraid doing it, um, also because it was in English, uh, but also uh, because teaching asks you to to put yourself above the student. And I uh, you, earlier you mentioned you know people who are talented just you know, they were born talented and I don't consider myself someone like that. I need to work really hard for everything that I uh, am able to do. Uh, so uh, to start teaching was uh, uh, something I, I, I didn't take lightly. And when I started, I first took over David Coleman's class at CGMA at the time. And that helped because I didn't have to put together the, the lessons and there I st started to uh, familiarize myself with teaching and, and what it was like. And gradually I, I started to see that uh, I could really help people improve their art. And uh, you know, it worked two ways because for me, every time I, I see the work of a student, it's a challenge for me to find out what is the thing this student needs to learn right now or what's the the step he needs to take because you can explain everything that you know but the student is at a certain point in his uh, development and he will only uh, benefit from hearing his next step you know if you uh, if you uh, go to uh, piano lessons it, you you don't start in the in the sixth year, you know, reading notes and everything. You start really simple, and you know, it, it's a matter of finding out where the student is and how can you best help him take the next step. And 
so that helps the student, but it also helps me because every time I need to go over those steps and, and understand what I'm doing. And every time I teach, I become a better artist and a better teacher as well. Nice, really good. Um, this question is really hard. <laughs> uh, oh, no. It always gives uh, people a little bit of problem. But here it goes. Uh, let's say you wake up tomorrow uh, and it's a different dimension. Nobody knows about you, nobody knows who you are, but you still have your skills, all your knowledge, uh, a place to live, obviously, uh, and you have $500 in your pocket. What do you do to get to this point in your professional career as soon as possible? Okay. Um, uh, I don't, I, I'm uh, in a different dimension, right? Yes, uh, pretty much uh, imagine that you are in okay. the same situation you are, that you are right now, but suddenly nobody knows about you. Okay. And you only have $500 in your pocket. Okay. I would start making art uh, I would start drawing like crazy and, and create a portfolio, uh, with work that I, uh, that I'm passionate about. Then I would, uh, look for opportunities, you know, try to meet people who also do art, uh, learn from their connections, learn from their careers, what they, you know, who do they know? How do they, uh, what, who do they work for? What magazines are there? What movies are being made? Everything, you know, try to get a, an idea of what the business is and, and then, uh, find ways in. So meet people, show my work everywhere, post it online. Uh, and I think this really, uh, I, I probably, this is the reason you asked that question because it, it, it uh, you know, it, probably the, in the answer, people want to know what they should do to, uh, get to uh, you know to to get their career off the ground, and I think um, I'm mentioning all these things because I think you need to work on all these things constantly. Uh, so it's not um, you know a career isn't uh, a point where you reach it and now you you're there. It's just like art itself. You know you can always keep learning. You can always uh, keep developing and. You know, uh, it's almost like the the life of an actor. You know, they work on a movie, and after the movie, they're out of a job. So then they have to look for another project. And for me, it's the same thing. You know, I work on a movie, and then uh, my work on the movie ends, and I have to look for a new job. So I have to, while I'm on the project, you know, put my feelers out there. I know what other projects are happening when I when this project ends, and try to hop on board. Uh, so that requires, um, you know, you have to be someone people want to work with, uh, and uh, you have to know people uh, that hire would uh, be able to hire you. So uh, those those are the connections I would try to make. Nice. Yeah, I, this question is special. I, I ask it because I do know uh, a lot of artists who are like who already have like good enough skills or in some cases like they're over the top but because they do not have uh, again like the basis of the business skills and professional things like that uh they do not know how to advance into it because they just yeah, have well, to stick I, with art I, I see a lot of people who are are shy and i think a lot of artists by nature are people who are shy they they like to sit in in an attic uh, you know, with a sketchbook and just draw and, and they're a little shy. And, um, I think it really helps if you, if you get over that and, uh, because other people, they just love seeing your work anyway. So don't be too afraid because if they like it and they hire you, then you achieve what you wanted. If they don't like it or they then ask them for feedback and then you can learn and you can improve. So either way you, you, you will win. Definitely. Uh, also, what is a topic that you think is not being talked enough in the creative community that should be talked more about? Something important. Um, um, well, I uh, maybe uh, failure, um, and it's it's a tricky thing because I. 
you know, I don't want, I, I want to show, I would love to talk about it and, and, uh, and talk about, you know, your fears, your failures, but at the same time, you know, the things I post online are also my business card. So if I post my, my crappy drawings, then that's what, what my clients will see. And, uh, so that's wh why I don't really have the, the best solution. Well, the, the solution I have is, is talking about it during live events, uh, because then you can really explain better how you, uh, how you see this, you know, how you, if you, because it's, it's funny because all of us have our, our bad days and our bad drawings, but very often, you know, I, I, uh, meet people who are, uh, um, stuck, you know, because they see all these amazing artists posting their work online and they feel like it's no use doing anything anymore because they will never be as good as that and on and on. And I think, you know, going back to what you are passionate about, as I mentioned earlier, uh, that's something that, you know, if, if everything went away, if no one knew me, if I didn't have any work, uh, I would still draw and that, you know, what I'm passionate about there, that's what I'm trying to keep alive. Because if, if the, uh, you know, the, the big studios ask me and they would, uh, give me a, a beautiful room with the, with the new Cintiq and, uh, and a high paycheck and I, I can't access that, you know, that passion within, then it wouldn't mean anything to me. So, you know, if everything would go away, then I want to know why I still want to draw. And that's what I, you know, what I want to keep alive inside me to be able to do what I love. And that's, I think, why I never have to uh, push myself to start to draw because I, I know exactly why I love what I do. Really good. <laughs> so, uh, if people want to find more about you, uh, where would be the best place to do so? Uh, that is uh, my website. Uh, well, yeah, you can just Google me. I think that's the that's the easiest way. I'm on Instagram. Uh, that's just my name. Uh, Facebook. Uh, so, I think that's that's the easiest. Awesome. Is there any last advice that you would like to give before we end this interview? Um, yes, of course. Um, I, I think, uh, you know, um, I, I think I can repeat it, uh, you know, start with what you love. Uh, I think if you do that, that will lead you to the place where you, where you want to be. Really good. I, I, I truly agree with that as well. And especially when the hard time comes, and they will come. <laughs> the hard times will come. Like, you better love what you're doing yes, to push yes. the dots. <laughs> exactly. Well, this has been the last uh, interview. And I thank you, Walter, for giving us your time and your knowledge. I'm really happy that you have uh, accepted this interview. So uh, I, I truly thank you for that. Well, thank you very much for having me on the podcast. It was my pleasure. So this has been the last episode of the Creative Hustler Show. Uh, please like this video below. And if you are watching us from the website, uh, please share it with your friends. Uh, and until next time.